everybody, Scott here from the Justin Service Station. Here at the end of the calendar year, another fill up for the month of December. Coming up in a moment, we have some great ideas and tips on how to use one of these, your smartphone, as part of your yearbooking efforts. Recently, we talked to a college instructor who teaches just that in one of his courses. Get ready to take some notes, but first, let's start with some news. Of course, if you're watching this in December, holiday season, Christmas red snowflake tie here. Hopefully you have a great one with your family. Now, if it's still December, absolutely keep promoting your book sale. Let parents know that your yearbook is the best gift ever. Why? Because it lasts a lifetime. Now, if you're watching this later in January, doesn't matter, keep on promoting. A reminder for spring yearbook staffs out there, we set your final amount order at the end of February. So the months of January and February are key to some great yearbook sales success. Let's see what kind of fun and interesting promotion ideas your group can come up with as we go down the stretch. Now, if you're a spring yearbook school, you may have already had your first paid submission deadline. But for everybody out there, here's some things to consider. It may seem like a no-brainer, but every year I see it in yearbooks, misspelled words and names. And nobody wants their name misspelled in the yearbook. So please regularly use the spell check button and do some thorough proofreading of every page. Some ideas? Maybe print out pages that are done. Give them to someone outside your group that you trust. Fresh eyes will almost always pick up mistakes that you miss. Another idea is called a proofreading circle. Print out a bunch of pages, sit people around a table, pass those pages all the way around the table. People have pens marking up errors or mistakes that they find, and then you go fix them. Or perhaps just project pages up on your classroom big screen and everyone proofreads all together. And finally, when you hit a page deadline, celebrate. That's worth celebrating. Bring in some snacks and drinks, play some music, have some fun, maybe take a day off. But remember, do a little future planning for future deadlines. And for Justin's advisors out there, be on the lookout for our brand new deadline email series. When your staff hits a deadline, you'll get a neat email message telling you, well, you'll just have to watch to find out. Well, I wonder how many students are getting one of these or got one of these for Christmas. We all know that smartphones are amazing instruments that can do really cool stuff from pictures to videos to using creative apps. How can we use this as part of our yearbooking effort? Recently, we talked to a veteran photographer and instructor at Penn State University who shared a list of great ideas when putting one of these to work. I'm John Veal, I'm Associate Professor. I teach photojournalism in the Belisario College of Communications at Penn State University. I don't see smartphones replacing the DSLR anytime soon for professional photographers. But I do think that uh, smartphones have certainly earned their place in the landscape of photography. There are a number of publications that are using it, uh, the broadcast outlets that are using it for certain applications. I think the quality now is to the point where I would not hesitate to use it for a yearbook or I would not hesitate to use it for a newspaper or a, a, a video clip for a broadcast. Uh, but uh, I just, there are certain applications where it works and there are some sometimes where it's just not the best choice. For instance, would be sports. You're not gonna wanna use a, uh, a cell phone for shooting sports. Uh, the, uh, the zoom and, and uh, the, the number of frames per second, things like that, uh, the size of the frames, I just don't think they're gonna work as well for sports as what the DSLR is going to, uh, at least at this point. But uh, for just every day, a feature picture, uh, photographing uh, a breaking news to get something out quickly, you know, I think that's, that's a pretty good choice. As far as uh, taking a still image for a yearbook, I really don't think it makes a difference. It's gonna depend on how you're publishing. Make sure you're shooting at the highest resolution. You know, make sure that you are not shooting at a, a smaller resolution that uh, it's gonna to be too small for you to, to, uh, to publish and book well. Like I always tell my students, zoom with your feet rather than with the camera. If you pinch to zoom, to zoom in from the camera, you're also magnifying the shake. And so I think that you're gonna be much further ahead by moving close in. Try to fill the frame as much as you can. You know, consider what is in the foreground of the picture, consider what is in the background. Is what's in the foreground going to add or detract from 
the picture. I once uh, heard that uh, in photography, you want to compose for the background. You know, of course, we're interested in the subject. We want to know that we've, we've captured that moment with the subject, but also we have to be very cognizant of what's happening in the background. Is there a tree coming out of their head? Is there a lamp coming out of their head? Is there a bright light that is going to draw the viewer's eyes to that rather than our subject? Hold the camera steady by locking your arms together. Okay, now you know, what, does it, what does that mean? Well, if uh, I'll, I'll see a lot of people who are holding their, their phone out here. Out in front of them. Uh, out in front of them. And it's really difficult to be steady whenever you're holding the camera out here. But if you have your arms next to your body and you're holding it like this, you can be much more steady. And if you're doing a portrait rather than shooting a photo of them, you know, making the photograph in bright sunlight, take them over in the shade. And uh, the light's going to be more even. Uh, they're not going to be squinting. It's going to be much more pleasant. If you touch on your subject, you're going to be telling the camera, you know, touch with your finger on the screen, you're going to be telling your camera, okay, I want this to be in focus, and I want the color correction to be for this part of the frame. Sometimes it's worthwhile, if you're going to photograph someone, is to turn out the room lights and just have them next to a window so that you only have one source of light. Uh, our brains are amazing things. You know, we look at a white sheet of paper inside a room and it's under fluorescent light like we're in here and it looks white. When we go outside in daylight, we look at that same sheet of paper, it looks white, but the camera doesn't always see it that way. And we, uh, we have to be uh, considering that whenever we make the picture. The one that I would recommend is called Pro Camera. Uh, there, you know, it, it, it allows you to set a shutter speed, it allows you to set an ISO, uh, it's not real expensive and I think it's really helpful. The, uh, you know, the, the photo app, the camera app that's in the phones, I think it's very good. And you know, for a lot of the applications, that's fine. But if you want to make sure that you're going to have a fast enough shutter speed to stop some action. Once again, we're not going to use this for sports, but you know, maybe it's uh, people dancing or something like that or, or outside playing basketball. Um, you know, just a pickup game and you can get close to them. You know, I think Pro Camera is a good choice and, and you can actually, uh, you have some control uh, over how the camera is going to make the picture. Many thanks to John for sharing some great ideas for smartphone use for your booking. Now, even if your school doesn't allow phone use for students during the school day, two quick thoughts. First off, maybe go down to the administration office and just ask them, can we use our phones for special yearbooking purposes during the school day? Don't be surprised if they say, sure, go ahead. But even if they don't, there are still 16 hours of the day left and weekends. There's a lot of material there, so go out and get it. Now, you just saw a small portion of our great interview with John Beal. To hear lots more advice and insights on photography and smartphone use, Check out our podcast at the address shown on the screen. And be sure to mark to follow our Yearbooking Report podcast so you never miss an episode. Finally, let's say you're back for a new year after a fun holiday break, so what to do right away? Well, time to reorganize some things maybe for things that maybe clunked back in 2019. Let's make that better. Absolutely go over your yearbook plan and your page ladder to make sure everything is still correct. Now, for a lot of schools, coming up soon is the start of the second semester or the third marking period. Do some changes happen then? Absolutely do your organizing and planning now so you don't get surprised with big changes later. Now, if you're watching this before Christmas, here's a hope from Jostens and your representative that you have a very happy holiday. Go have some fun. If you're watching this in January, hey, it's time to crank it up again. There are so many stories out there to tell, and your school is counting on you to tell them as part of your yearbooking efforts. Thanks again for watching.